You're listening to the World Famous Wide Roof Radio with cast number 604, recorded on Wednesday, August 24th, 2016. Tonight, brought to you by CravenSpeed.com, MotoringStripes.com, and OutMotoring.com. Mini performance, speed, and style. It's OutMotoring.com. <laughs> Free zone. Made Todd laugh. We're good to go. Hey, everybody. It's DB in Arizona bringing you a brand new episode of the World Famous White Roof Radio, number 604. Uh, joining us this evening is my good friend Todd Pearson from Kansas, motoringstripes.com. Todd, say hi. Hello. Can I say for the record, making someone laugh and making gin come out of their nose are not the same thing. Yes, yes they are. They are exactly <laughs> the same thing. Thank you very much. And, uh, and of course, the good reverends joining us from Detroit Tune, DetroitTune.com, Mr. Chad Miller. Chad, hi. Hello, and I can say when it comes out your nose, it does hurt. It does. It's a little burn. A little burn. A little burn. It makes oh. you feel alive. <laughs> Is that what it does? Yes. So last we met, Chad, you were getting ready to roll out to the Dream Cruise, and I'm curious, what vehicle did you end up deciding on taking? Oh, we actually, uh, we took a couple of vehicles, actually. We, uh, you know, this will actually be a lot easier next year because it's uh, the the new place hopefully we'll be right down the road so we'll just be able to cycle the vehicles out but uh we we went out with the nova in the morning with a uh very small gas leak but we're only going all of 0.5 miles an hour in stop and go traffic so uh it's not like it could really spread anywhere so uh we cruised around for three hours and went uh, five miles north and five miles south and then which is only just a quarter or a third of the the Woodward Dream Cruise. And uh, we're like, okay, we need lunch. So we went to a nice little barbecue place and uh, went home, had a couple beverages, and decided, okay, let's go back out. And and then we took the cabbie back out because it had air conditioning. Nice. It was getting hot out. We knew storms were going to come, so we left the top up. And uh, we got out there and uh, did a little more cruising. And then right in the middle of the downpour, uh, the transmission or the the shifter actually decided to come apart, and had to drive the car all the way home in third gear. Oh, nice! That's a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, it was actually uh, a, a pretty good challenge. Actually, uh, at no point did I ever smell burnt clutch. Wow, uh, officer! Um, I I didn't come to a rolling stop there. I yes. have only third gear. <laughs> yes, it was. It was one of those. It's like you looked way down the look, road and look, planned look, really. Look. Go go really go! <laughs> I was like, no, no, going to go left. Got to do it. Oh my gosh! Well done, Mister Chad. Well done indeed, sir. Yeah, so it was, it was a good time. Uh, we took a uh, you know good friend of ours, uh, customer, and you know employee's husband out uh, with us, and uh, it was his first Dream Cruise. He enjoyed it, uh, Chris Horton, and uh, we uh, just pal around all day. Really, nice. Awesome. Sounds like a good time. Yeah, it was it was good. You know, I mean, it was funny. The uh, the cars that uh, are a hundred years old were out there and uh, having no problems. But the guy with the brand new Lamborghini that still had temp tags on, he overheated in traffic and <laughs> caused a really major traffic jam in a already major traffic jam. Nice. I'm sorry, it's just a little bit of justice. When- yeah, old dudes in Lamborghinis, not the best idea. Old dudes in a quarter of a million dollar car. Yep. And it was brand, brand new. I mean, this car was fresh off the lot. I still had the new car smell. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I could smell still it had, as I was driving by. Still had the little knobbies on the tires. Oh, yeah. It, it still had temp tags, you know, taped to the back of the car. So Piece of crap yeah. Lambo. They probably didn't teach him how to drive it because I have to say, I've, I've driven a Lamborghini before, and they're not that easy to drive. They're, they yeah. are not. I've yeah. driven a Lamborghini as well through the Las Vegas desert. Yeah, they're not that easy to drive. Not like you would think. They, they do take a little instruction. Yes. And in all reality, he should have bought a Corvette and a uh, second home at the, for, that, for that price. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, he could have had a cabin up north. He could have had a Hawaiian timeshare. He could have had and a, a car that is very small plane. Well behaved. <laughs> he, yeah. he, he, br- he could have brought, uh, what, six or seven uh, MX-5s, right? Oh, yeah. Which, Several. Which, I mean, DB, just... that's what you had a chance to drive this past yeah, week. Yeah, we're going to talk more about that. Okay, there you go. 
That was dumb. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is an amazing price right here. It's refurbished uh, Dominator Turbo from our friends over at Motoring because you've got a, a Gen 2. You've got an R56. You have possibly a 2007 through 2010. Chad, would you say are really the most prone for this? The uh, for the turbos? I mean, all turbos are uh, <laughs> prone to R50. failing. You've got an at... R56. Your turbo is going to die? Yeah. Over down yeah. motoring.com, he's got these refurb these refurbed uh, Dominator tur- turbos for a thousand eighty nine dollars ninety five cents. And Chad, what? how much would it cost to get one of those installed? Um, a turbo? Yeah, You're yeah. probably talking you know in that six hundred dollar range. What? Maybe a little less. That's amazing to me because I've heard turbo installs going for as much as five to seven thousand dollars at a. Oh, you're you're actually talking to the dealer then because. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, a dealer a dealer oh, turbo install could run you forty eight hundred dollars all oh, yeah. day long, every day, and they just gave you free cups of coffee and a sweatshirt. And you yeah. know what? Snacks. They have snacks. They have snacks. But you yeah. know what? I'd, I'd rather not spend that $4,800. Uh, I mean, we all like our local dealers. We really do. But $4,800, that's a lot of money. That's a quarter of the price of a new car. Why spend that kind of money? Go over to Out Motoring, order up a turbo there, take it over to Chad. Chad's going to put it in for you. You can have the whole thing done for the, for less than it costs to do a clutch. And you'll have money left over to go to Dunkin' Donuts on the way home. So you have money left over, go get your dollar sixty medium iced coffee with milk. Outmotoring.com. Turbos. You've got an F56 and you want the JCW front splitters because it looks hot? Yeah. Aaron's got those. It's two pieces of plastic for $368. I swear by them. I have them on my car. But look amazing. What a... What a... What a screw job. Yeah, what a grease job on that thing, man. And I'm not blaming Aaron on this. That's the price of the... That's the the price you pay at the... You know, probably a little bit more than the dealer. But Um, worth it. But worth it. Don't get me wrong. Looks really cool yep. and totally worth the money. Um, you can get that over at Outmotoring. You can get the turbo over at Outmotoring. You get free ground shipping on most of those orders over $195. So you, that means that in either the turbo or the front splitter, you get them shipped for free. Yes, sir. And if you use the coupon code that you got from your mailer, which I know you guys are all subscribed to the Outmotoring.com newsletter, if you use your coupon code, you'll save 5% more. So no, you get free shipping when you buy these expensive things. And you're gonna save five percent. So you get that turbo; it's eleven hundred bucks. Save five five percent on eleven hundred dollars. Todd, what's the math on that? Fifty five dollars, right? I'm not listening anywhere. What? Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> not only that, um, you get the engine mounts. Good price on the engine mounts too. All the things. Don't forget, uh, Aaron's been he's been our sponsor since practically we started. He's one of the original sponsors on Motoring File as well, keeping us going. He's all about the community. He's all about you guys helping you guys out. That's why he's got a big team of people working in his shop, and they're doing uh, adding up to three thousand new products each and every month. And not just like the cool lifestyle gear or the turbos or the go fast parts or the glove box organizers, like the things that you need just to do basic repairs on your car. The small parts, the the hooks and screws and clips, all the little weird fiddly bits. He's going to have all that stuff in stock, all those weird part numbers that you find over at realoem.com. Yeah, Aaron's got all those in stock now. Or he can get them for you too sweet, and he gets them for you at the same price or better than you get at the dealer's parts desk. Outmotoring.com. And remember, once you get over to Outmotoring.com, sign up for the email newsletter. There's a link at the bottom of the homepage. Just do it. Get it over with. You get an email. Give you your 5% discount code. Super duper awesome. That, of course, from our friends over at Outmotoring. Outmotoring.com. Mini performance, speed, and TSW engine mounts. That's Outmotoring.com. New engine mounts are will change your life, by the way. Change your life. I, I believe they probably will. Especially yep. at an R50 or an R52. R53, sorry. And it drives like a rattle trap. Yeah. New engine mounts. <laughs> Change your life. Trust me. I know. I know of these things. Yes. How about some of that fancy news music? Boom. So you know what we're not going to talk about this week because there's no, no news? We're Boom. not going to talk about sales. Yeah. I am going to direct you over to motoringfile.com, however, because as we spoke about last week, Gabe posted his review of the uh, X1 versus the Mini Clubman. And Which, uh, I got to say, it was as much uh, uh, the the least amount of love I've ever seen him pay to a BMW. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's because he's given all his love to the, the 2002 that's in his driveway garage now. Yeah, there there is a little bit of that, which he hasn't really talked about. If you follow him on Instagram, you, you've, you've seen the gorgeous piece there. Yeah, we're going to have to get him on the show to talk about that. But, uh, yeah, he, he, he did say... 
And this is something, after he said it, I've been having discussions with a lot of people, is that the the styling of the BMW X1, it's their smallest crossover, mm-hmm. you know, a kind of SUV, if you will, yeah. that competes with pretty much everything on the market. But here's the problem with it, and, and he's right about this. Can I, this I haven't read the piece yet, but can I guess? Okay, what? It looks like everything else in it that. It does. It looks exactly like you. you it looks like a CX-5. Yeah. From the side, it looks like a looks Nissan, like a-, a Mazda, a Honda, the CRV. They all look the same. They all look the same. And I said, you know, whoever comes out with the crossover vehicle, the crossover sport utility, whatever, that just completely rethinks the styling and it doesn't look like everything else yeah. is going to make a billion damn dollars. Oh, yeah. They really are. And. I think that car is super popular right now. Yeah, it is. And, well, all of the cars are like that. That's all you see driving on the road anymore is these small SUVs like this and crossovers, if you will. They're not, a, not even crossovers. It's a small SUV is what it is. Yeah. But I, I read something, and I don't remember where I, I read this in the last week, and it was a, a review of the new Mini Clubman. And uh, <clears throat> it kind of made me think about this Gabe's review over at Motoring File of the Clubman versus the X1. And in this review, it called the Clubman the anti-crossover vehicle. Like, if you don't want the typical boring look of all of these other vehicles like this, the mm-hmm. Clubman is for you because, one, it looks different, and it's fun to drive. And right. I'm like, why doesn't Mini embrace that marketing instead of being premium and all hipster about it and right. say, this is the anti-crossover, the anti-SUV SUV because it's got all wheel drive and it's got four doors and it's got lots of space to haul your crap in the back, mm-hmm. and it's the anti. It doesn't look like everything else. This is the car you want. It's got style. It's got quality, and it's fun to drive. Boom! It's got the fancy interior. It's a triple threat. I know what everybody's looking for. Well, and I'll, I'll say this also. I I was having a discussion with a local sales manager, and he said, "I got to tell you the truth. The Clubman's doing better than we thought it would." Yeah. It's actually well, doing really well. That's because the Clubman's a good-looking car. It is, and he said— And it's it, super practical. And it's, so not to go too deep into sales, uh, uh, but he goes, you know what's going to suffer in a year from now? He's what's really fading? The four-door? The two-door hardtop, man. Oh, yeah. People come in the dealership, and they see a Countryman with four doors, and it's big, and it's got that, that look that everybody wants, that crossover SUV look. Yeah. They look then look at the four-door— the hard top four door. Um, and then they look at the Clubman. And the last thing they look at, and they're like, eh, I don't think it just, you know, the they still say, I, I, I kid you not, people look at the hard top, the two door hard top, the car that we all know and love and own, mm-hmm. and go, eh, it's kind of small and impractical. Wow. It just blows my mind. Just absolutely blows my mind. Wow. So that's people that I mean, obviously we all we all know better here. We, I mean, we're preaching to the choir. Right. Um, my mini properly equipped will seat eight after, <laughs> after I visit IKEA. <laughs> eight children. That, that's it. Well, uh, it will. It includes a table. You can fit twelve in there really easy. I, well, twelve if I didn't have the table. Just saying. <laughs> after a trip to IKEA, but so I mean that doesn't surprise me though with Clubman. I like the Clubman. Um, yeah. I think the only problem I have with the Clubman is that it's a little pricey. It is a little pricey, and I, I, I uh, if Gabe were on here, I'd call him on some of this because yeah. he tried to compare the two, and he didn't do it correctly because the X1 he's driving, I believe, uh, I didn't look at the specifications on it. It was an all-wheel drive. It's an all-wheel drive. And he's comparing right. it to a price-wise to a Clubman that's not all-wheel drive. Right, and, and he's also comparing the weight. So, of course, the Clubman's going to be lighter because it doesn't have the all-four. Yeah, and, and it doesn't add that much to the Clubman, but it does add a, a couple hundred pounds. So, yeah, right. it, it, it's it's not apples and apples when you get down to that. And he's going to throw out the argument, oh, yeah, but you don't need all-wheel drive, which I would agree with. However, most people, most consumers today, that is what they want, and they've been brainwashed by Audi. I blame Audi for this 100%. Okay. Is that all-wheel drive is the be-all, end-all of driving, and it's now trickled down into – in fact, it was such effective marketing on Audi's part right. that now BMW is going across the board all-wheel drive. You know, right. the whole the, the whole rear-wheel drive. There's only going to be a handful of rear-wheel drive BMWs left. Right. So he actually so. put the price here. So the the X1 came in just under 44k, um, and the Clubman that he's got equipped the way it's equipped from you know for Gabe is 30 was 37. 
Yeah. I still think he's missing a lot. All four to that, you're still going to be just at 40 grand. Yeah. So, anyway. It's not too far, but the even the X1, I think, is modestly equipped because uh, the one I looked at, you know, when they first came in, had the M Sport package, had the nice wheels, had nice leather interior, head up display. It's got the movable uh, bucket seats in the back, has the mm-hmm. automatic open, close, you know, uh, uh, rear lid backup camera all that see i don't think gabe's car has backup camera i know um pretty sure he doesn't have leather right you start getting up there and comparing you equally equip these cars and they start getting really close a whole lot closer well, to the four thousand because he actually posted a picture a copy of the monroni i think let me double check that no it wasn't the monroni it was just the equipment list and it didn't list the pricing oh you're right yeah it didn't so list the this is just this is just the standard equipment. Yeah. Um, well, no, because the X1's got the driver assist package, premium package, cold weather package. Doesn't have tech. Uh, um, uh, yeah, but there's no tech. You're right. And it came to 43,620. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll have to get Gabe on the show. We'll have to talk about that more. That's but he actually, he went so far as to call the X1. Boring. Mini. To call it what? He actually called it a mini. <laughs> yeah, he did say it was like the... Um, uh, a not very good mini. Yeah, and, and not a good one. But the Clubman, he said it was like a really good BMW. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Anyway, go back over to motoringfile.com, read that. Um, also, for those of you who happen to be driving a Mini Cooper Clubman um, and you happen to have a 2016 or a 2017 that was built uh, anywhere Until... between August 19th of last year through July 14th of this year, I uh, expect to see a recall notice here very, very soon. And we kind of broke this <clears throat> news during Mini Takes the States. This came out right before Mini Takes the States this year. So I'm going to say early July, we oh. were alerted to this information that a recall was coming down. It blows my mind. I kind of thought, oh, this already happened because, you know, I was kind of out of the loop for, you know, 10 days I was gone on Mini Takes the States. Mm-hmm. And I thought it all came down then. Nope, this is the same one. And it's an airbag recall, a side curtain airbag recall. And we talked to and Gabe, I think, even mentioned this on the show a little bit. Maybe not. Maybe we cut it out of the show. Cut but it out of the show. We talked to some people from Mini, and their take on it was, yeah, it's not really that big of a deal. There have been no accidents reported yet. But <clears throat> what happened here is that the material, whatever material is surrounding the, the airbag in question here, you want to yeah. say it's a side curtain airbag. It's not perforated enough. Right. Something. It didn't get perforated enough, so it may not deploy. It may or may not. They're not sure. But some, uh, a, a random number of them are probably not going to deploy properly, and so they're just going to replace them all. So they've recalled everything. So it sounds like it's going to be a fairly simple fix, though. Yeah, I think it's the what we were told, and I was just kind of off-the-record way. It's like, oh, yeah, the material got tre- stretched too tight around the airbag here, and it may not deploy right. That was a really basic way of saying it, and I think when you read the the release of this, it kind of said um, there's a couple of places. This was from Edmonds. There was another one, uh, like, carcomplaints dot com. Right. You can go to, and they've got things. Uh, but anyway, one of them was a little more in depth, and said that yeah, it was about the perforations that when the airbag comes through, and it's it's not the main airbag. It's a the side front. curtain airbags. Right. Right. So and. Up to this point, like I said, no no accidents or injuries or anything have been as you know resulted from this, which is good. I mean, it's always good when a recall happens. You're like, okay, nobody got hurt. MW caught this, and they're going to go ahead and get it taken care of for you guys as soon as possible. Start watching for recall notices uh, mid September. Yeah, these will start. They said the recalls will begin the 15th of September. So yeah, exactly. But pretty much, if you're driving to Clubman now and you're listening to us, you're going to get one of these notices. Yep. So starting the 15th of September. Just talk to your dealer. Yeah, um, or if you're due for service, um, just ask them to go and pull, you know, pull for a it'll recall. Ha- or- it'll happen automatically when you go in. If you have a car that's in this, it's a full-on recall. <clears throat> they will catch it when your key is read. That is the first thing that comes up is this car has a recall. Right. So, yeah. and But go to your mini dealer. Don't go to Jiffy Loop. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm. I mean, Jiffy Lube won't read your key. Who reads well, your key? And um, also, why would you go to Jiffy Lube? Because your your oil change is included for. Actually, no, it's not on a 2017. I take that back. You get one. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. You get one free oil change on a 2017. Yeah. 
So don't go to Jiffy Lube. Just pay the hundred dollars. Have it done at your dealer. That's right. Or go to Chad. They won't charge you anything to actually look at the key. Speaking of oil changes, we didn't talk about this on the previous show either. That I mentioned it to Chad offline, but DB, I don't think you heard when we were talking about this. The the or the uh, uh, lubricant in my JCW and everything from 2017 on. So yes. like 2016, 2017 on. I mean, it used to be uh, what weight oil do we put in there, Chad? 5W30? 530, oh, yeah. Five thirty, yeah. Five thirty, yeah. Five W30. Now it's zero. It's zero weight oil. It's wow. a zero W twenty that goes into my car. Wow. Ooh. Yep, mini has changed. <laughs> Interesting, and it that's, all has to do with viscosity. I asked the question that's about thick it. Stuff zero thirty is thick. Zero twenty. Zero twenty. Well, that's extra viscous. It's it's, uh, it's actually more liquid because of the zero. Yes, uh, yes. That's the way that works. Okay, got it's, it. It's watery. It's yeah, all yeah. about viscosity. And when I asked the question, the tech started talking, and I kind of lost track. Yeah, and I he goes, sure. "Just go to JoeGibbsRacing dot com, and there's a really good discussion about viscosity and temperature." And that's why many changed it. <clears throat> and I think what this does is going to the zero weight oil allows it allows the lubricant to be more effective at a wide range of temperatures. Oh. Because if you think about it, DB, you got people in Arizona driving around in 105, 115 degree right. temperatures. And then in the same car with the same lubricant in it, you have people driving around in Detroit, Michigan right. in like five below. Right. So you got to cover these ranges, and I think it's a little more effective. But um, when I got my uh, I got my oil change right before I went on Mini Takes the States this year, and they mentioned something about this, they're like, "Oh, that oh, that you know oil is really expensive in your car." I'm like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah, we don't stock it much because we just started doing this zero weight oil." And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And so that was kind of tipped off to it. Huh. So I believe from 2016 on, Minis are taking zero weight oil anymore. So. So if you get your sir, your car serviced at the dealer, you're going to get zero weight oil. Yep, yep. Huh. And, and if you want to do it yourself, pay attention. Don't just automatically go, oh, I've had six minis, and put 5W30 in it because that's not what they recommend anymore. Now are they going to change all of their specs for all of the cars, that's or are they good... just doing it for the new ones? It started, I think it's everything from 2016 on, Chad. I, that's... Uh, including the Countryman? Yeah, I think it would be every. I, it would be all the engines because it's the same engine. Okay. Yeah, the Countryman's got the same engine that the that the rest of the cars do. There's nothing really different about it. I thought the Countryman was still running on the old uh, Peugeot engine. No. It, uh, yeah. Oh, the Countryman. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Countryman. Countryman is. Bad, 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 bad. My bad, my bad. The, yeah. But they're it. just changing it based yes. on a year, not necessarily on a motor or anything. They're just changing it on that particular. Yeah, the Countryman may still date. use the 5W30. I don't know. Right. Yeah. I'll have to check into that before I spout off a little bit here. But, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I heard Clubman in my head. That's yep. right. I do that too. So if you're driving an F car, um, make sure you pay attention to the oil that's going in because you should be using zero weight, not five weight. And your dealer knows that, and they're going to do it correctly. But it isn't. Yeah. And, and what what's even more interesting is the uh, the F56 we had the 2014. Yes, was still using five W30. Interesting. Yep, and they didn't they didn't change it until just this this past year. And I want to say it's within the last six months. It's those engineers that eat their sandwich with a knife and a fork. Yeah, but if well, I'm not going to say if it's one thing they know is how to make an engine last because that would be a, <laughs> Chad would Chad would call me on that BS right now. I would believe you're wrong, sir. <laughs> At least the uh, R56 guys, anyway. Hey, but still, you you know what? You're you're better off to change your oil every five thousand miles. Yep. Than to listen to, and even now it goes every it's it's uh, they've dropped it to ten thousand miles. Right. And we've seen them as – I've seen people come in with oil change. Like the computer tells them as as few as like six or 7,000 miles. It's like it's wow. time to change your oil. Wow. But listen to the computer. It knows. There you go. Or listen to us and go every 5,000 miles. Go every 5,000 yeah. miles. Actual mile. Yep, yep. Whichever comes first. Um, let's move on. As we've got one more story here. It's kind of mini connected related. Um, BMW recently released its new BMW Connected app. Which kind of gives us an idea of where Mini Connect is going to be going in the future. So basically, what you just said is the Mini Connect is now connected. <laughs> um, it's uh, yes, connected with an app. Yes. So there's a whole big giant press release over here. It's a huge presser um, with a lot of hipsters in it and holding looks like iPhone fours. 
Um, and so what I'm, you just said there is read the first three sentences and the last three sentences. Yeah, and you'll get all the information that you need. Uh, but this is all about what's which direction BMW is going, BMW's going in with um, you know connectivity in the car with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It is, and if it gets to the point where it's actually functional, and and we were just talking before the show also, <clears throat> is that right now if you have an iPhone, which is the only thing I can speak of because that's what I have. That's all I have. If you turn on in your uh, privacy settings and your location services, scroll all the way to the bottom in system services, and allow it to to track your frequent locations. And let's say you're the kind of person that, that goes to work every day sometime between 7 and 8 o'clock, and you kind of drive the same route, but occasionally you take a different route because you go to Dunkin' Donuts on the way or Starbucks or you avoid traffic. Mm-hmm. Um, it learns those, and then when you get in your car – it starts telling you, hey, it's going to take you 28 minutes to get to work today. Traffic is normal. It's going to take you 25 minutes to get to work today. You'll need to take this route because there is an accident here or whatever. That is – you can have that now. Your your iPhone will do that now, and I've experienced that many times. I get in the car, and it tells me it's going to take you 12 minutes to get to the dealer. And it kind of freaks me out at first, but then now it's kind of convenient. And it even knows wherever I am if I'm going to go home. It's like – it's going to take you 18 minutes to get home. This is what they're kind of building into the new Connected, um, and they're integrating CarPlay into it in BMW. It kind of, they, they call it a personal assistant or an extension of that. You won't have to just go, oh, I'm going to go home. I'm going to need to enter my address into the nav or just say go home, and it's going to tell me, hey, there's traffic. We need to reroute you. It's going to kind of do it automatically, which is it's cool. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't like thinking, oh, but somewhere there's a record of that. And I'm like, it's on your phone. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not a big deal. Unless you use Google products and it's in Google stuff. Right, right. There's that. Apple has a very uh, specific statement about they don't yes. store this information anywhere in the cloud that is on your device. And it is encrypted. And it's only yours. So don't get all tinfoil hat on us about this. I'm totally going to get all tinfoil hat right now. You can. I'm not, actually, because I let <laughs> Google know where I'm at all the time. There you go. There you go. But anyway, this is one of the things that's going to be integrated into the new connected app. Is It's it's uh, it's going to act more like a kind of a digital assistant, if you will. You know, some other features. It's going to be years before we see this in the Mini. And by the time it rolls down to the Mini, it's going to be years old. Right. And... Uh, the other cool thing is, like, if you have an let's let's say if you have an appointment in your calendar, yes. and you got a one o'clock appointment today, well, yes. eventually, and let's say you have an Apple Watch also, yes. you're going to get an alert. Your watch is going to buzz at you, and it's going to say, "Hey, you need to leave now because traffic time." You know, well, oh yes, yeah, it'll know, and it'll tell you, "Say, hey, you've got an appointment. Get to it." Yep, you yep. got you better leave now because this is how long it's going to take you to get to your appointment. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. It is pretty cool because you know, like I said, it's kind of That's a the future. Yeah, digital assistant. But in a way, gummy bears with my phone. <laughs> in a way, it already does that now, and you don't. Yeah. And you don't need many. Can, your phone and your digital devices will do that for you now. Yep. And you don't need um, mini connected or BMW connected additional. But they're kind of going, oh, this is new. It's innovative. I'm like, no, it's not. People, you're just. <laughs> <laughs> You're just allowing another thing to, you know. Regurgitate. Exactly. That's a good word, Chad. I like that. <laughs> like that? Yeah. My phone all the time now. If I got it, my, my thing, it's telling me, it's like, okay, you need to leave for this event already because you need to be there in mm-hmm. X amount of time. And it tells you, and it gives you just the right amount of time because it knows that when you get the alert, you're like, oh, crap, I got to find my shoes and my coat and all this stuff. So it doesn't tell you exactly when you would be if you were just driving right that second. It gives you that little bit of buffer. Too, I love nice. it because every one of my devices, they're all connected. So let's say I'll get an alert that says you've got an appointment coming up in an hour. I get it on my desktop. I get it on my Apple Watch. I get it on my iPhone. And then somewhere, wherever it is, my iPad is dinging at me. Oh, yeah, it was, me it was funny. Me. The other day we had a, a group chat going on with a whole bunch of these mini people. And we're all getting together. And one of the people was my uh, my front office girl, and, and her watch just kept going off. She goes, I need to charge this thing. It's going to die. You guys stop texting people. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, just leave the group, Chad. It's okay. Yeah, just you leave, know? The group. leave the group. I, I've had to go through and make changes. When my phone rings, like four or five different devices in my house ring. Yeah, it's ridiculous, and I don't have an Apple Watch, 
my phone rings, my my com- both of my computers ring, and my iPad rings. It's like, hey, DB, here's the cool thing if you have the Apple Watch, though. I don't have an Apple. If you did, I'm just telling you, here's the cool thing about it. If you have your phone open or your laptop open, yeah. it'll give you the message there, and it won't send it to your watch. Oh, nice. You don't get the multiple alert when it does that. But if you're nowhere near it, if you're not actually, looking. That's actually gotten a lot better because I know that was a problem Apple has addressed. And so now, like, if I answer a message on my computer, it doesn't make a noise on my phone. Yes, yes. Which is very cool. Anyway. Yeah, it's a new cool. And uh, you know what? Here's the cool thing, too. If you use Slack like uh, the like we do, like we do White Roof Radio, we have a Slack channel. And we all talk to each other via that. Um, you also get that on your Apple Watch. Oh, yeah. You get Slack. You get, you get everything on your watch now. And you can, I can Slack. Res- awesome. Here's the cool thing now. I can respond to you guys on Slack. Oh, you can really in Slack? Yes. So you can type out a little response really quick? Yeah, or you can uh, use the microphone and dictate. Nice, like Dick Tracy style. It is. It's It's, it's very Dick Tracy. Very, very cool. Get yourself an Apple Watch, man. All right, I'm on or it. Or when I get the new one, I'll sell you this one for like 10 bucks. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so into the news from motoringfile.com. Let's remind you guys about one of the other fine sponsors over here underneath the white roof. And that, of course, is our friends over at Craven Speed. Have you guys clicked over and checked out the new Craven Speed website yet? Yes. Super awesome. It is. I think it's super awesome. It's, it's like, oh, my God, it looks really nice. And it works great on your mobile phone. If you are one to go click over to CravenSpeed.com on your mobile phone, it looks awesome. It looks awesome on your browser. It looks awesome everywhere. You should go over there because you can buy all the things for your Mini. Not only your Mini, but other cars as well over at CravenSpeed.com, like the shorty antenna, like the uh, FlexPod adapter so you have some place to put your phone so you stop using your phone while you're in the car, you piece of shit. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Edit. that was supposed to go. On. That was supposed to be on the inside, not on the outside. Sorry. Um, you can also get the the platypus mount, of course. Which uh, for those of you who suffer in a state where you have to have a front mounted license plate, this will keep you from having to drill holes in your bumper. Uh, the dipstick for the R50, R56, the, the first two generations of minis, you can actually read and won't break. All that stuff plus so much more available for you over at Craven Speed. CravenSpeed.com. Go over there, check it out. And I want you to you know check out the new website. Super awesome. And then go buy something, please, which would be super awesome. And then when you go to check out, I want you to leave a comment there that says, Thanks for supporting White Roof Radio. We really appreciate that. So do they. They, of course, being a Craven Speed. CravenSpeed.com, uh, Portland, Oregon, since 2003. Also one of the original OG uh, sponsors here underneath the White Roof and MotoringFall.com. We love those guys. They've been around forever. We're going to be around forever. They help us out. You should help them. Cravenspeed.com. Go. 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 So last week, really quick, and then we're pretty much done, um, is the new MX-5, the new Miata, Mazda Miata. I'm just going to call it a Miata because nobody knows what an MX-5 is. Um, At least Paulson doesn't. He's a still Miata. Anyway, (laughs) the new MX-5 came out. It's been getting rave reviews. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but everybody who's driven this car is just like totally falling in love with it. It's like going, oh. I I look at it. I think it's a good-looking car. You You guys have seen it, right? Yep. I think it's really nice looking. It is a good looking so car. I had the, my lady friend was is actually looking to buy a new car, and she wants something smaller, something fun. She's driving a CRV right now, and she's ready to kick things up a notch. And I said, "Well, we should go look at the MX-5." She goes, "Oh, I like it. Let's go do that." And it's a good price too. Mm-hmm. Um, start base price starts at twenty six, and it goes up to only like thirty, right? And that's just because you get leather interior and sat nav. Big deal. Right. Um, and you don't want leather interior in a drop top car anyway. So you don't need to spend thirty grand. Um, so I got a chance to drive this car, and I got to say, this car was a hoot to drive. Mm-hmm. One hundred fifty-five horsepower. I'll go into the rear wheels. Um, second gear screech, no trouble at all. Get up to hundred miles an hour in the blink of an eye on the freeway. Piece of cake. Yep. Drive, drive it around town. It's like driving a car. It's just like, yeah, cool. You just want to cruise and just go run errands. I'm down. We can do that. Drive around first, second gear, just through city streets, stop and go traffic. It's just like, that's yeah, fine, whatever. Oh, you want to drive? Like, you want to drive? Like, you're going to go on a racetrack? Sure, we can do that too. And it's like, oh, no, this is pretty cool. But then there's like little things that kind of start creeping in with this, uh, with the, with the Miata. And the, primarily it's the size. Yeah. This car's small. Yeah. It's small. The, the boot is small. There's no passer for the boot to get into the passenger compartment. The passenger compartment is small. Um, the driver's side, driver's side seat sits up kind of high so that when the top is deployed, my head actually hits the top mm-hmm. and a wind kind of brushes over the top of my hair when the top is put away. What, what's left of it? What's left of my hair. Shut up. <laughs> I had to say When it. I say the passenger compartment's small, I... I would have a hard time riding in the passenger seat of that car to the grocery store. Really? 
Yes, my knees were very much bent. So there's no way I could take an MX-5 on a trip, say, like Mini Takes the States. So it's interesting, your response and <clears throat> when you said this to us a while back. Yeah. Um, what was the thing you said? You go, the, the Roadster is a much better car. Roadster is a much – if I were looking at for a two-seat sports car right now, I would try to find a Mini Cooper Roadster for reals. It's got more headroom. It's got more space in the interior compartment. The, the boot is way bigger. The boot in the, in the Roadster is four times bigger than that in the MX-5. Yeah. You get a little bit more power, I think. Yes. Um, the only difference is uh, front-wheel drive versus rear-wheel drive. Um, and I, I, think it's just a, I think it's just a nicer car. Yeah. I mean, I it's... like I like the Miata a lot. I, don't get me wrong. I thought it was brilliant. It really was. If you want a car that you're going to drive around with the top down all the time or you're 5'8 or shorter, then go. It's perfect. Interesting. Because I will say that the Roadster, having lived with it now for, what, about three, four months? Yeah. We absolutely love this car. It is so much fun to drive, and you get in, and the top goes down in like five or six seconds, and... Um, the auto top drops super quick. It's all manual. You pull a lever, you push it back. Super simple. Oh, it's manual top. Manual top. So you just pull a thing, you push it back, clips in place, done. You want to put it up, it's up again in seconds. And it's just manual. It's all easy to do. It's spring-loaded, all the things. Yeah. Uh, and, it, I mean, and it shifts nice. It drives nice. It makes it a brilliant sound. But, man, that car is just too dang small. Interesting. Yeah, because yeah, the, ro- the Roadster itself is the same size as every other F56 inside the car. And oh, yeah. the only time I've ever had headroom issues uh, is when the top is up on the car and my lady friend's been driving in heels. Oh, Because right. it's a manual transmission, and when she drives in heels, she jacks the seat up kind of right. high because of the the angle for her to you know get to the pedals. Sure. And so uh, occasionally I'll get in the car, and I'm like, no, oh, I got a duck. You know, yeah. so the MX-5 doesn't have height adjustable seats. Interesting, which I thought was interesting, and it doesn't sit as low. You don't sit as low in the compartment as you do in the Roadster. And it's a complete wonder why the Roadster didn't sell any better than it did the Mini Roadster. I'm baffled. I don't think enough people got a chance to look at it. I don't think well, I don't think there was enough marketing behind it. But honestly, if you're looking at the Miata, look at the Miata and then see if you can find a Roadster floating around. You'll be blown away how much better that car is. It's a interesting. It's versus a Miata. Yeah, I've seen on our lot now here in Kansas City. I think there was one Roadster and two coupes, a, a Cooper Coupe and a Cooper S Coupe, both uh, used on the used lot. Yeah, I've been seeing Cooper Coupes floating around lately, and Cooper Roadsters too. Interesting. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I I would if I was four inches shorter, then the Miata would be for would be for me. And you can't beat the price twenty six grand, ready to go. So I bet that'll be a limiting factor for the new uh, Fiat. I have a. I actually uh, saw one of those tonight. Really? You, yes. I've seen pictures. And well, this is Detroit. We have one of everything here all the time. <laughs> um, it. I actually thought it was a Miata. Yeah, when it I looked. First saw it, and I was like. Why does that have a Fiat badge on it? It's like, oh, Ooh, there's something yeah. new. That's the new one. That's the new one twenty four spider right there. Uh, it was uh, white with a black top. Yeah, the 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 MX five I drove was this pearlescent white with a black top. And, and there was absolutely no masking whatsoever. It was, and I didn't even look to see whether it had manufacturer plates or something. But it was one hundred percent street car. Yeah, those cars are hitting dealers now. From what I understand, yeah. Okay, so it could be, it could have been, yeah, an early car. It's essentially, it's essentially, it's the MX-5. Yeah, it's built on the, it's built on the same platform. Yeah, it's uh, there's a little when you look at them side by side, you go, no, it's not the same car, but they're very similar. And so I'd be curious to know if it's got the same, you know, room issues. Got the good, it comes with the good sports suspension already. Yeah, have to do that. It's already done. You know, this car, you get the base with the base model. It is ready to go out for autocross, ready to go out for, for track day, ready to go blast the canyons with top down. Unless you're so overall, I mean, it's still a really good, awesome handling car. It just feels really tight. Good. Was really it a- good, awesome handling. It's just it's you need to be a smaller person. When I say smaller, I don't mean smaller overall physically in size. Like I because I'm not fat anymore like I used to be. Um, you obviously you need to be a kind of skinny because it has seats almost like the Lotus uh, Exige. So you fit in there pretty tight, but you have to be short in stature. I'm roughly six foot tall and I couldn't ride in the passenger compartment. And like I said, with the top up, the, my head hit the roof. And if you're not comfortable in a car, it's no fun. It's no fun. I mean, I was comfortable driving that thing with the top down, but here in Arizona, that's not terribly practical for five months out of the year. Yeah. 
got to be able to put the top up. So was it a manual or an automatic? Oh, it was a manual, dude. And that transmission, oh man, it's like butter. Yeah. It just shifts. It's just like poop, poop, poop. A car is so easy to drive. It's so just, it, it's eager, and at the same time, it's just like chill. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yep. We had that JCW Roadster, and JCW Roadster was like driving an F1 car because this wanted to go. It was <laughs> yeah. like it was like a, a pit bull, like just yanking on the chain, yep. right? Just drive me, drive me, drive me, fast, 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 fast. This car, no, none of that. This car is just like, what do you want? I'm here for you, man. I got your back. That's you want to go. Like I said, you want to drive around city streets. This thing turns inside of its own width, inside of its own length. At the turning, the turning radius, yeah, is remarkably tight. So, like, navigating a parking lot, piece of cake steering, super simple, turns really sharp, really good response, great brakes, great suspension. Uh, I imagine the stereo was even pretty good air conditioning, kicked ass, just if it wasn't so damn small. It just makes me think now that um, Gabe is the only one of us I think he's had any time in the new convertible, the new mini convertible. Right. I'm going to have to go get some seat time in that car and see how it compares to the, the Roadster, for example, yep. and even the previous convertible, which I've had quite a bit of time in. We drove... Uh, JCW convertible cross country on Mini Takes Estates 2010. So right. I put a lot of miles in that from New York to, to Denver. Mm-hmm. So pretty good experience with the R56 generation of the or the R57 uh, convertible. Right. And I've got a lot of experience now with the Roadster. So now it's time to see what the new Mini convertible is like. Yeah, hopefully, you know, uh, I mean, I'm hoping at some point Mini decides to bring the Roadster back. It's probably not going to happen, but, yeah, it would be a good yeah, thought. But I think – can you imagine, though, the F56 is a Roadster? I think that would be really hot. Well, I think if it's going to come back, it's going to be in the version of the Super Legera. Probably. You're correct. Yeah. I think yeah. If, if it comes back in anything, uh, that it will be the Super Legera for him. So. It's, it's really too bad that that car didn't do better. Yeah, it's an awesome car. And I'd say after having it for four months, it is a freaking awesome car. It's an amazing car. And honestly, I'm, I'm going to say this the last time, but if you're in the market for an MX-5, you owe it to yourself to find a Mini Cooper S Roadster and drive it and compare it. Mm-hmm. Compare all the things. Look at the, the, the boot dimensions. Look at how well you fit in both the driver's seat and the passenger seat. Look at the overall equipment. Look at the way the car's configured. Come make sure you compare them side by side, and you're going to find that you're going to actually uh, probably like the Roadster better. And get one, get a get a Roadster, a used Roadster S uh, that's either certified pre-owned yes. with a warranty to 100,000 miles, or it has the ability to go to that. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, uh, you're not real order one new, so you're going to have to find a used one. Right. You're yeah. going to find a used one. If you can find one still CPO'd, and, man, and, you're, and if you're in the market for that kind of car, the two-seat drop-top car, you, I highly recommend that you look at the Roadster while you look at no matter what else you're looking at that's two-seat, 200-horsepower-ish cars. Yep. Just look at it. I'm and with then, you. Then then you go, oh, my God, the Mazda is great, but the Mini's better in so many other ways that I'm just going to get the Mini instead. Yep. I mean, I'm I'm highly biased, to be sure, but – I dare any of you to go out and do the same comparison. You're going to agree with me. Well, and I'll tell you right now, uh, they know from experience, if you can find a 2013 Cooper S Roadster with uh, somewhere in the 20 to 30,000 mile range, yeah. you're going to end up paying between 17 and 23 grand for it. So I'm saving roughly three to, well, six to eight grand between, over, the, over a Miata. So, yeah. But well Same. worth it. Well worth it, in my opinion. And a car that originally new was probably in the upper 30, so it was in like 38 plus. Yeah. Anyway, go check them out. Thanks for thanks for listening. Yes. Um, I think we're done. Yes. Yes. I want to remind everybody that I am tired of using press photos for show art. <laughs> I am. And, and I don't want to use them anymore. Instead, I want to use fine pictures of your guys' cars. Like uh, this week, you'll see a picture of uh, Leopold's R53. He just shared that with us over on the Facebook page. That's this week's show art. You know why? Because he shared it with us on the Facebook page. It's not a contest, guys. If you share it with us, I'm going to use it as show art. Trust me. Uh, and if, you sell, if we end up getting too many, I'm just going to create a gallery of them over at Facebook so I can just pull from them whenever I need them. I'm assuming that when you share them with us, that you are meaning for me to use them as show art and put that out in the show. If you don't want us to use it as show art and you don't want us to put it out as the sh- as the show, then by all means, don't tag us. Don't put it on don't, the internet. Don't put it on the internet. <laughs> yeah, don't put it on the internet. <laughs> all right. And let me make sure I make sure that we're clear when I tell you guys how to tag things, especially on Instagram or Twitter. When you're trying to tag us on Instagram or Twitter, don't hashtag it, please. I, I don't have time to wade through all the hashtags. I want you to actually put in at White Roof Radio if you're posting on Twitter or on Instagram. Actually, put in at White Roof Radio to tag us, so that way we get notified in the app. Todd gets notified. I get 
get notified, Alex gets notified, Chad gets notified. We all get notified that you just tagged us in a picture on Instagram, and then I, we can pull it down and we can use it for the show art. If you're going to do it on Facebook, just post it on the Facebook page. We all get that as well, and we'll end up using it at some point as a show art for the for the show, just like I did this week with Leopold's picture of his very nice uh, pure silver R53. And there's another car in the background. I can't quite make it out. And once anyway. you uh, and once we actually use your photo, you then can brag to all of your friends how cool you are. Yeah, and if you look at this week's show in your podcast app, you're going to see a very nice black and white picture of Bruce, my mini, um, as the as the show art, and it shows up instead of the white roof radio logo. It was a picture of my car. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do for your mini too. So it's going to show up on thousands of iPods and Android devices and mini connected screens uh, across the great land of the whole planet. Listen, we have listeners literally across the globe, and we are going to share your photo with them. So make sure you tag us. We are at White Roof Radio on Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you do it like that. Just post up your thing and type out, hey, at White Roof Radio. Make sure we see it or post it on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash White Roof Radio. We'll get it. We're going to make it the show art. Awesome. Awesome. I think we're done. Yep. Perfect. This is the part of the show where I like to make that funny clicking sound as soon as I remind you guys about motoringstripes.com. Oh, yeah. Go get a keychain. Go get a keychain. Did you guys see these keychains? They're really cool. Added some more this past week now. Oh, God, added more. And you find those. If you go over to motoringstripes.com and you, you point at this little swag link at the top and then you go to keychains, um, there's a little drop down that makes me think there's going to be more stuff in the swag department. Yes. So watch for that. Uh, but for right now, you go over guests come, but some really cool keychains are like these little uh, plastic and they're badge the badge decals, but as keychains, and they're awesome. And they're what five bucks? Uh, no, <laughs> no, they're not five bucks. They're thirteen dollars. Yes, but still, they're super cool. I like them. They're Can't, made by two and a half easy payments of five dollars each. <laughs> I like that, Chad. I like that. There you go. No no financing on these. Anyway, go over to motoringstripes.com. I want you to check these out. Remember, that's under the swag section there. Um, they're really cool. I like them a lot. There you go. Go check them out. Also, while you're there, if you have a countryman, countryman boot protector strip, got to get that. If you want just bootstripes, just regular old bootstripes, and you retired the ones from the factory because they, like me, it bothers you that they don't actually go all the way to the beginning start at the beginning of the bonnet and go all the way to the, the end of the bonnet they kind of just go there in the middle of that gap yeah todd will send you a set of stripes that actually fit your car right you install them done and done you say dude check out my car todd pearson striped it right there you go do it yourself motoringstripes.com not only that but i think the white you afraid of coupon code still works Yes, it does. If you coupon code of 5050-5050, you'll save 5% on any of your orders at motoringstripes.com. And then don't forget the top secret ordering method if you want the White Roof Radio Sunroof Delete Kit. You should go over to the contact form at motoringstripes.com and shoot Todd a message. Say, hey, I need a quote for a R53 Sunroof White. I need the White Roof Radio Sunroof Delete Kit. Todd will send you a quote, and then he'll make it for you and send it out. Done and done. Motoringstripes.com. Go check them out because blank is boring. Boom. Boom. Uh, but we are done, gang. Thanks again for listening. We do appreciate it. And uh, thanks for leaving us nice reviews over at iTunes. We appreciate that as well. And leaving notes in the show notes when applicable. Um, but this is the part of the show where I like to make that funny clicking sound. And then I say, questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and click back over to whiteroofradio.com. There you can leave us a note in the show notes. You can also email us feedback at whiteroofradio.com. Until next week, gang, this is DB. I'm done. Cheers. See ya. I was thinking about doing the gummy bear cleanse, but then I saw like a video on YouTube and I said, okay, I'll pass. Yeah, no. You know, sugar free gummy bears? You oh, should geez. never, ever YouTube any pooping videos ever. Just don't <laughs> ever do it. Just don't. <laughs> Dude, for real. Joshua sends me a link. Let's go in the post- end of the show, dude. I'm posting on the. I was posting all this on the Don Burnside Twitter feed just because I was bored at work today. And then I said, "Oh, I'll just do the gummy bear cleanse." And then Josh, Josh sends the link. You know, Josh from Nebraska. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sent, you know, a 13 minute long video of some guy who rolled through a fi- whole five pound bag of those uh, <laughs> and gummy bears, dude. It, and it's like a 13 minute video. 13 minute long video. He eats five pounds of gummy bears. Of course, he pukes, right? And like it's all gummy bears. And then like two. <laughs> Gatlin gun. <laughs> it was the worst thing ever. Was it the sugar-free ones? Oh yeah, the sugar-free ones. Ugh, yeah. On Amazon. Yeah. Yep.